the longest lived people in the world, and we're going to talk about some habits that each of them has. The supplementation gene activators and the production of energy is not only considered as methylene blue, which increases the neural mitochondrial energy, and then NADH, which is the final energy where we have this supplement that you can use up to 20 milligrams maximum, so that there is a compound between coenzyme Q10, which helps us to transport oxygen and produce energy. Malic acid, which is a good energy producer, is mitochondrial as well. Inositol, hexaniacinate, which is cold B3, which causes no flushing, no hyperemia, improving peripheral vascularization and brain metabolism. Note the epigallocatechin 3 gallate, which is extracted from green tea which helps a lot to see precisely methylation and acetylation. Transresveratol, which is an excellent antioxidant that can be used very well to activate the good genes. Astragalus is not only an adaptogen, but it doesn't allow stress to do any damage, and we know that stress itself can cause immunosuppression. Therefore, by using astragalus, we are regulating our endorphins and encephalins so that we don't have much stress that could cause damage. Methylfolate will also activate good genes. Regarding healthy longevity, we cannot forget that we have some advice for all our patients that the quality of the water will determine the quality of the blood and consequently the entire energy production. For us to have a long life, we cannot use filtered tap water. There is no filter, neither by reverse osmosis nor by a carbon filter that can filter tap water. It is water from a reservoir, and this reservoir water contains aluminium hydroxide, copper oxide, chlorine, and sodium fluoride. Sodium fluoride, therefore, is an extremely toxic allogenic, and it accumulates in the area of the thyroid, decreasing the production of thyroid hormones. Apart from all this, aluminum hydroxide has an affinity for neural cells, and we have noticed that research shows that Alzheimer's has in the cerebral area in the neural cell, in the brain cells, 10 times more aluminum than a person dying naturally. Therefore, we should avoid tap water since there is no filter. We should look for mineral water, preferably soft to cook and drink. When I say soft, I mean water of mineralogical concentration that is harder and not good for cooking. Brazil has many hydromineral sources, and we try to drink mineral water, even if it is of a harder concentration. But the soft ones would be better to drink and use for cooking. So when we use soft mineral water, we cannot use the same brand of mineral water where there is a region with a concentration of rocks. With a mineralogical concentration where it varies the chemical composition of this water, Therefore, we're also not interested in doing pH monitoring. Remember that we have a buffer effect to regulate this pH. We need clean, healthy water that comes from a mine. So we consider it a structural water. And therefore, it is used on a daily basis. However, we are also going to rotate these brands that we use. We have here in Brazil several brands of soft mineral water, and we have hard waters of slightly higher mineralogical concentration. What this means is that these waters can be beneficial as long as you take them and you don't use them in cooking. The soft mineral waters can be used, either from hydromineral springs 
or from artisan wells also. As we use this water, we will have a renewal of red blood cells in our cells every 120 days, making healthy blood plasma is the focus of using natural mineral water. Let's remember that one of the biggest problems that we see in humanity today is the contamination by toxic metals, from mercury to lead to antimony to arsenic to talc to aluminum to chrome. These are the main toxic metals found today in contamination from pesticides, as well as from the polluted city itself, which has a lot of lead. Aside from dental amalgams, which were heavily contaminated, we should also think about arsenic, which has an affinity for the skin and for the neural area, just as lead has an affinity for the neural area and the muscular area. Mercury has an affinity in the malin layer of the nerves and also has a destructive and toxic affinity in the cerebral neural area. And therefore, we have to diminish this contamination. We have to think about the effects of metals. Thus, we have DMSA, which we can use orally along with R-alpha-lipoic acid. Today, R-alpha-lipoic acid causes less causticity to the stomach and greater bioavailability so that it can enter the blood-brain barrier and remove these toxic metals. So to have a longevity of life, it is not enough just to have excellent genetics. We have to have healthy life habits. And then we want to invest these healthy nutrients in an organism that is clean of metals and pesticides in order to have healthy epigenetics, thus we have the essence of being healthy, which is simply not having pathologies and being free of disease. We also have to think about reducing stress. Here below you can see on this slide that we are teaching the patient to have an ideal plate of nutrition. This would consist of protein, carbohydrates, fiber, and fatty acids. So we want to look now at the best foods in the world for longevity. That was studied in the book World Keys to Health and Lung Life by Dr. Bernard Jensen, PhD in nutrition. And he traveled to Pakistan, the Himalayas, and Russia in search of the longest of people in the world. And the foods that he found to have the best function when it came to having an optimal energy production were, first, children that were raised on breast milk during at least the first three years of their lives. Goat milk, 